gets the draw. Dear guests, and all of our viewers watching around the world. It is the moment you've been waiting for. It's now time for the start of the draw for the FIFA Women's World Cup, Australia and New Zealand. Australia. Australia are competing in their eighth consecutive FIFA, FIFA Women's World Cup. Their best ever performance came in the quarterfinals in 2007, 2011, and 2015. Draw the next team from pot two. Canada. It is Canada's eighth straight qualification for the FIFA Women's World Cup. Their best showing came at USA 2003 when they finished in fourth place. Julie, could you please draw the next team from pot three? Doing great. Condescending. Republic <laughs> of Ireland. There we have it. What an opening World Cup fixture for the Republic Debut opening of game. Ireland. Jeremy, could you please draw the next team from part four? Nigeria. Nigeria are the only African team to have qualified for all nine editions of the FIFA Women's World Cup. So let's just have a final look at the eight groups. In Group A, New Zealand, Norway, Philippines, and Switzerland. In Group B, Australia, Republic of Ireland, Nigeria, and Canada. In Group C, Spain, Costa Rica, Jamaica, or sorry, Zambia, Japan. In Group D, England, the Group B playoff winner, Denmark, and the People's Republic of China. And in Group E, USA, Vietnam, Netherlands, Group A playoff winner. Group F, France, Jamaica, Brazil, and the Group C playoff winner. Group G, Sweden, South Africa, Italy, Argentina. And Group H, Germany, Morocco, Colombia, and Korea Republic. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the reaction and discussion of the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup group stage draw. I'm joined by Melissa Andrietta, Matilda's assistant coach and also current player, Tamika Yallop. So we've been drawn in Group B. First game, Republic of Ireland. Meeks, I'll come to you first. Just your general thoughts on who we've come up against. So we've also got Nigeria and Canada who have played recently. Yeah, I think... Um... It's always nice to have played uh, teams in recent times. Um, you do get a feel for what you're coming up against. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, to settle your nerves before the draw, you just think you've got to beat them to progress to the next step. I think I'm excited to, to play each of the teams. And I think, um, uh, yeah, of course, it would be exciting to, to have them again. With them. Mel, I mean, we've, we've played Republic of Ireland. That was Sam Kerr's 100th cap. We lost against them. Played a few games against Canada recently. What are your thoughts on our opponents in Group B? Yeah, likewise, as Meek said, excited about um, finding out who we're facing. It's all very real now. And I can already say on our uh, technical WhatsApp chat, um, already busy planning what our um, next windows will be going into the World Cup early in 2023. But uh, these opponents um, are great for us. Everyone's earned the right to be at this World Cup, so they'll all be tough. But like Meek said, having played um, two of the three teams recently, I think that gives you a familiarity, but a, a confidence um, as well that you, you know um, what you're coming up against. But we also know there's still a lot more work to be done um, before, between now and before that first game against Ireland and the rest of the group games. 
Yeah, well, we'll dive a bit deeper into that first game against Ireland. But first, get your questions in on all digital platforms for the panel, for Tamika and for Mel as well. Shoot them over to us. We're going to be joined by head coach Tony Gustafson later on and also Matilda's legend, Julie Dolan, who have been at the draw. Okay, let's talk about the Irish pub <laughs> in Australia. They're going to be packed for that first match. But we've also got teammate Katie McCabe at Arsenal's teammate of Caitlin Ford and Steph Catley. Meeks, I'll come to you first. Republic of Ireland, how, how are we going to approach this game? Yeah, look, I think... Uh, as you mentioned, they've got some quality players um, in their lineup and and players that are playing in in the best leagues in the world. Um, at the same time, so do we. And I think competitively, it's a great matchup. Um, we have we have played them in the past, and um, I think that was a close game in itself. And and it's World Cup, so anything can really happen. Um, but yeah, I do think we are putting a strong foot forward against them, and. Um, it was on home. Um, as you said, there's top quality players on both, and we'll be one. Well, huge football fan. We're all football fans here. Let's just go back to the fun part of it. I mean, there's going to be a huge Irish contingency at this game, isn't there? You know, we're going to have the majority of the home fans, but the Irish are going to come and they're going to be loud and they're going to make themselves known. Well, you've already said it. Uh, the, there's plenty of Irish pubs um, in Australia and on the East Coast and no, day, no doubt they'll be full pre-match and then the stadium will be full as well. And um, I think what a great uh, opponent to have and uh, next to that, what a great fan base um, to have in the, in the stands as well. I think it's a great opening game, an exciting one, where there's going to be a lot of passion played on the pitch and um, sung in the stands as well. And look, that game's on the 20th of July at Sydney Football Stadium. But let's go deeper into this though, Mel. What are we going to expect from this Irish team? They came through the knockout stages, first time at a World Cup. What are their strengths and what do we need to look out for? I think what they've uh, shown with um, their world-class players and how they've been building and growing, they're tactically very astute. So. I think we'll face a team that is going to be difficult to break down and also very um, efficient in counter-attack situations. And if they're allowed to control possession, they'll, they'll try to uh, bring teams down into their own goal zone. So, um, and then once they're there, like we've already mentioned, they've got players in that area of the park that can deliver great balls into the, um, into the box and, and, um, you know, create problems for teams. But, you know, we'll be on the front foot and we believe in our preparation and the path that we've chosen for the last 12, 18 months has been for exactly this reason, to prepare for tough opponents like um, the Republic of Ireland. So um, I think we believe in the work that we've done and the work that we get to do and we'll be ready come that first match. Meeks, you're a World Cup veteran. I've played in World Cups. The first game, there's always a few nerves but this is on a whole new level. This is a home World Cup. How do you think the players are going to try and get rid of all that stress, get rid of all the nervous energy and, and just make sure that they're ready and prepared for the game on the day? Yeah, I think um, World Cup is, is a whole new level um, when it comes to tournament football. It's, um, it's something that, you know, it comes around once every four years. So you work so hard um, in that interim period to, to get your team there and um, to be as prepared as possible. So when it comes down to it and when it comes down to, you know, the whistle and kickoff, I think a lot of players will revert back to what we've been focusing on um, in the few days leading, leading up to that. And, of course, the months before that, you really kind of do try to focus on the finer details of, of your game plan. Um, you know, you spend hours and hours um, talking about the European um, and, and soil. It's, that's going to be next level. The atmosphere will be intense. It'll be crazy. It'll be awesome. Um, I think out on that foot, as a footballer, you you really want to focus on um, the minor details and the specific things that are going to win you the game. Yeah, and really trying to let everything else just move on. Mel, just from your point of view as a coach, how do you make sure that the players 
are focused in on that and can and can turn off all the white noise that's happening around because there's going to be friends, family there. The pressure's on. Again, we said huge first match up against Ireland. Your role as assistant coach, what are you doing those days leading up and then on match day? Well, first I'll answer it by what we've been doing already and that's in the last 12, 18 months. Uh, I, I feel like we've already been preparing our, our circle so tight and I think as a group we're really understanding what each other need, both staff-wise but um, staff for players and and players for each other. So that understanding of what each other needs in a given moment has really developed and strengthened over recent months. And then for me personally, to go to the second part of that question, as an assistant coach, I think it's all about me being aware and um, observing individuals and what they might need and, and not over playing the moment or the situation. These are world-class players um, who have been here and, and done this before and very experienced and, and thrive under pressure. And for me, it's really just judging the situation and, and being there for what they need and on the park, individual work, training, um, focusing on the individual and um, supporting them to be at their best come that uh, whistle, that kickoff. Yeah, it's going to be huge, absolutely huge, exciting times. Just a reminder, everyone, you can send any questions on all the Football Australia digital channels, so please throw them at us. Okay, three proud Queenslanders on this panel. I like this. <laughs> Brisbane, second game, 27th of July. Brisbane Stadium, we're playing against Nigeria. Me, come on, this is giving me goosebumps already. We're that far out. I'm sitting in the middle of Bedfordshire and I can't wait for this game in Brisbane. How are you feeling about it, Meeks, already? Yeah, I think um, as we kind of, you know, second game would be in Brisbane. It, it definitely sparks something, some, a great deal of excitement. And I guess, yeah, um, if there's more pressure that comes along with that, you know, it's, it's pretty close to home. Um, and obviously really close to the heart and, and where I've done a lot of my football growing up. So um, for me, it's, it's super exciting. And, and I think, yeah, the atmosphere that we're going to have there playing Nigeria is just going to be uh, crazy intense and awesome. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that game. Mel, I'm sure you're familiar with Caxton Street. I mean, Caxton Street on a match day for any sporting event is pretty special, isn't it? Us Queenslanders mm -hmm. know what it's like. Can you just drive what the atmosphere is going to be like because also when you think the Nigerian fans they're always singing they're dancing they're loud they're proud what are people what are the fans going to expect when they descend on the caco or Caxton Street on match day yeah look that's the place to be uh everybody make sure you're there um pre-match well and truly early and I don't know, in the past, they used to close that street off and to any government officials out there that are listening, I suggest we do that again so we can really get the party um, atmosphere and vibe happening. But it, it's cross code that that street is a, a sporting icon where um, we prepare for battle um, and walk into um, Brisbane Stadium and then celebrate afterwards. Um, in the street as well and um, a lot of good memories there even going back to Brisbane Raw uh, times as well but uh, cross codes lots of good memories and um, it's a, certainly a place for celebration and um, bringing people together. Speak to our family and friends there it's, it's just an added special moment isn't it playing a World Cup own home soil is great but in your hometown is just another level isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think um, just knowing that possibly you know half the people in my family, um, as you know, family, um, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, to have them all there, and and I think one of the main points of of having you know on home soil is to inspire the next um, generation. And and I've got plenty of nieces and nephews that I know will be watching me and and cheering so loud. So um, and not to mention as well. Um, yeah. I have goosebumps thinking about that game. And Mel, again, let's let's dive into the technical details and, and what we're mm. going to come up against um, in Nigeria. Tell us about them. I think, um, you know, we played South Africa uh, recently and um, they've finished fourth uh, in the African Cup of Nations not long ago. And 
you know, they have world-class players as well who are playing in um, top Spanish leagues and um, are goal-scoring threats. It's a team that's going to be very physical, um, very athletic, uh, and a team, I think, that will use that athleticism and physicality to try and transition on us. Yeah, Nita, Mel was just, just uh, mentioning Asasada Schwale plays in the Spanish league. Incredible striker. Has had a few injury worries, but she's a huge threat to our defence, Meek. What, what are you expecting from her? Yeah, I think um, obviously it is, is definitely a huge threat. And I think also kind of the unpredictability of, of um, you know, when they execute um, that transition and, and how fast they can do it um, is something that is going to be a major threat. Uh, at the same time, it's nothing that we haven't come up against before and we know already that that's something that we're going to have to deal with and that we've been training for and, and you know, that sort of thought process goes um, into our training and into into what we do each day on the park is, is you know, if we're in possession, how we set up for a quick counter-attack and, and all that kind of, th of, of stuff. So I think it's definitely a real threat um, and something that we're aware of and, and yeah, um, looking at sort of countering um, every day walking into the World Cup. Mel, just want to ask you, what's the balance of focusing on our own performance and our own tactics and, and dealing with what you're going to come up against in the opposition? That's a really good question. And I, I don't think it's one where I can give you a certain percentage or, or ratio of what the focus is or the balance, but philosophically and our principles are that we focus on ourselves first and foremost and what our strengths are and the strengths of our players and how we um, allow them to shine and um, execute the game plan against the opponent. Now, of course, that balance comes into play when you know an opposition team has, um, you know, a, a certain style of play or key players we have to adjust um, some of our tactics uh, according to that. But our starting point, point is always us, um, our strengths, the way that what we're all about, that high octane attacking um, physical athletic team. Um, and then a look at the opponents and, and what we need to uh, contain or what we can expose even more with our strengths. And just to follow up on that, Mel, because there has been some tinkering with tactics and, and formations and, and, but leading into this World Cup, is, is, there, is that something Tony wants to maintain, more of a consistent approach with starting 11? I mean, we've seen Serena Beegman with the England team had the same starting 11. She had the same four or five mm -hmm. subs. It was a really solid group. Everyone knew their roles and responsibilities within that team. What's the approach once this year's over and, and now preparing for these group stages? 100%, I think um, we've sort of spoken about in the past, um, sort of leading up to um, the Asian Cup or even the June window this year, there was um, a lot of movement in the squad and that was for a number of reasons, COVID being one of them and the restrictions of travel. But what we've, um, we've always aimed to do is to have it, um, our best players um, informed players uh, who are performing available, uh, things like injuries um, and also, you know, we need to give our players a, a break at some point as well, ha have meant at times um, or a lot of times recently we haven't had the player availability that we'd like that we've seen from England in the Euros. But uh, with our planning and, and all the work the players are doing with their clubs, our Triple SM team with clubs as well, we think our player availability is, is going to improve and alongside our um, focusing in on um, a group that, uh, you know, we want to keep growing with and, and building towards the World Cup, that, that door is slightly closed a bit more to, to new or um, players. It's not totally shut performances will still you know um, be rewarded but it's about getting that continuity and all those factors come into play when you're you're, you're trying to select a squad um, it's always been our, our focus but um, different factors have, have come into play and speaking of injuries meeks 
you've just had surgery on your ankle and exactly like Mel said, you know, this year, and they're, they're not, we've, we have suffered from, these aren't minor injuries. There's been quite a few major injuries within the squad. For you personally, Meek, just tell us about what's happening with your rehabilitation and, and how you think of that as a player and, and what you're seeing with your teammates around you and injuries. Yeah, um, I guess it's it's always tough. Um, injuries are unpredictable, um, and yeah, depending on severity, you you just don't know how long you're going to be out for. Um, thankfully for me, my um, post surgery recovery um, and back to play is around three months, so um, I've got the time and obviously the and the be back um, cup. Um, how things are going to heal and and. I'll, so um, it's a day, day a day process, and I definitely feel my team teammate, as you said, said with, yeah, a few major long term injuries um, within the last um, year or so. So we've experienced that, that's each other, and um, we do, do very well, I think. And, and our team culture is to none um, with the environment that we've created for for everyone to feel to feel safe, to be, to feel a part of the team and, and to also create that environment where if there are injuries, the players that do come in are, are welcome and, um, you know, feel a part of the squad just as much as, you know, an injured player or a starting player. So I think the environment that we have in the Matildas is um, allows us to sort of um, roll with the injuries that we get, um, help each other get back to, to the best form that we're in and, and lift up others around us as well. So um, despite yeah the unlucky injury sort of situation, we're not still in the best sort of little position that we could think that I'm down to the culture created. Yeah, look, if we're going to have all those major injuries, you kind of want to have them in the year before, don't you? So we can keep everyone fit going into the year of the World Cup. Um, we're going to cut over to also now Julie Dolden, Matilda's legend, has joined us. Been on the draw, Julie. What was the atmosphere like? Great, well done, circling with the balls in the pot. Extraordinary work. Clearly been practicing that for years for that big day. Um, <laughs> first of all, just give us your thoughts on our group, Group B. We've got Republic of Ireland, Nigeria, and Canada. Yeah, good I'm, work, darling. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to know what everybody else thinks about the uh, the group. Um, first and foremost, but um, look, the atmosphere and, um, you know, I, I feel uh, that these, uh, the Matildas these days may have uh, witnessed, you know, exactly this sort of scenario, but um, it's massive. It's huge. There's, there's people on the ground everywhere. There's teams in their hundreds and um, the excitement now now that the stage is set, you know, everybody knows what they're up against. Um, it's, it's just gone off. Julie, just back to you. And I heard someone ask you this question earlier <coughs> on. And ever in your lifetime, did any of us, I think, ever imagine that we'd be hosting, co-hosting a World Cup on home soil? For you as a former Matilda, what are your emotions surrounding that? Uh, I don't know if you saw me speak on stage, but I, I was having trouble holding it in. You know, when I when I think about all the uh, the pioneering players, and you know, maybe those who haven't played in a World Cup, and even even players since that time. Um, you know, I yeah, as I said, I, it was a bit emotional, and I I felt emotional for those people as well. So um, yeah. It, it really is, and and we all feel, I think, that, you know, we're part of this as well. This is our World Cup as well, so um, really, really excited. Julie, we were just saying um, how the Irish contingency and all the Irish clubs are going to be absolutely going off in Australia for that first game, aren't they? The... Um, yeah, I while I was looking at the draw, you know, I was trying to assess... Um, what every what everybody else was going to have to come up against so i i kind of missed you know who australia got i know we got nigeria republic of ireland and it was it canada we're back we're back playing against canada again they're turning into our new brazil i think we're just like 
popping up high and all the time. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised we didn't get Brazil, but um, you know, Canada. Look, the last time I see, saw our girls uh, play Canada, I was really inspired. They did really well. Um, and recently, um, I think everybody's got a lot to be pumped about because uh, we're getting some good wins under our. Belt. That's, that's a real confidence booster. So uh, I'm 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 not sure, but I'd be thinking if I, if I was. Um, you know, you don't want to stroll through to the next round because, you know, you need to sort of have a couple of good games under your belt so that you, you know what you're up against. Yeah, I'll just throw to Tamika quickly on that. Meek, you as, um, as a player, and obviously you've got three games, but the first game is really important to get off. As a player, to approach it, is it all focused on that first game just with the others in the back of their mind? How do you approach it and how does the squad approach it? Yeah, I think so. I think we'll we'll obviously look at each team um, individually and and do sort of our background and and make sure that we have a good foundation against um, the three teams that we know we're playing. Um, but yeah, as soon as you know it gets it gets closer to kick off, the focus definitely does go to the first game. And um, at the end of the day, you've got to beat who's in front of you at the time um, to sort of get those points and progress. Yeah. So um, first game will definitely be front of mind for us. Yeah, can well, I, can I just ask? It's been great. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Jump in. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just want to ask Tamika and Mel, you know, how they feel about the, the draw. I'm excited. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> Meek said, um, everyone's at the right to, to be at this World Cup and um, if to be the best you have to beat the best and um we'll focus yeah. in on that first game but um i think it's a, a great um challenge for us for a great challenge for us to really start um preparing for now that we know exactly who we're facing yeah it's like it's like you know the unknown becomes known the stage can be set yeah and homework can be done yeah so Yep, 100%. We were just saying yeah. it's already flying around in our chat. We left some spaces free in the sort of um, FIFA windows next year. And, um, yep, it's been – it's exciting. We're trying to finalise those plans. And to make it – Oh, Julie, we'll let you go. Oh, sorry, Jules. Yeah, go on, Meek. Sorry, jumped in there. To make it. Oh, I think, uh, yeah. Um, I'm obviously excited. It's um, It feels like it's finally here now. So, of course, they're, they're, why not? You've got to beat the best to be the best. So, um, yeah, I think our group is an exciting one. Hey, listen, thanks, everybody, for having me on. I wish you could actually be here as well, um, you know, <laughs> to sort of celebrate and, um, you know, but look forward to seeing everybody back in Australia. Julie, thank you so much. And just quickly, just on behalf of former Matildas, current Matildas, you're a legend. Thank you for being a pioneer. We're so proud of you and fantastic to have you representing us and the Matildas at the draw. Enjoy the night. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> what a legend. Love, Julie. Absolutely love. Um, look, the, the excitement's already building. We're still, what, eight months away. Um, how, how are we going to temper that? Because now it's got to be, it's, we've got to enjoy the moment, don't we, Mel? And then it's got to be back to business as usual. I love the fact, insights into your group chat with the coaches. What's going on there? What's the thought process? Planning's already started. Yeah, I mean, it's, I keep saying, I sound like a broken record, but we feel that we've been preparing um, already, making sure that we've um, played as many uh, unique and top ranked nations as we can in the last 12 and 18 months. But again, knowing specifically who we're gonna face in the group stage, uh, that gives us that real focus. And um, yeah, the chat has been all about the, the one or two spots um, that we had free in FIFA windows next year. Who, who do we want um, to fill uh, them? And it's, it's been um, based on style of play. And, and I think, um, uh, you know, that's all being discussed now. I can't sort of look at it because I'm, I'm here, uh, but there's definitely a lot of pop-ups about what we're doing in, in that space so that um, the first six months of next year, um, preparations are on point. 
Yeah, look, we'll come back to talking specifically about Canada and we've got Tony Gustafson probably about three or four minutes away, so we'll have a chat to him. But let's see what the other groups are doing, hey? Um, we were having a chat before. Mel, what, what else jumps in uh, jumps out at you from the other groups? I think, um, I mean, it's bound to happen too with an expanded um, competition, an expanded tournament, but there's a real spread um, amongst the, the groups and um, I guess one insight into it, the work we've been doing in the lead up to this is together with our analysts, we, we tried to look at each group in terms of um, their toughness and, and base that on their current FIFA ranking. So, you know, right now, um, depending on the playoff, uh, playoffs in February and who wins that, but, you know, um, Group E could be a really tough group or a group of death. Group D as well could be, um, you know, I, I'm sure there's a lot of discussion out there um, about, you know, which of those groups um, are the group of death, but just based on FIFA rankings, um, there's a lot of high ranked um, teams in those in those groups um, you know and, and ours is going to be a challenging one as well but there's also form there's there's FIFA ranking in this form as well so a lot of factors um, to consider but I think it's um, it's going to be an interesting group stage an exciting one for everyone yeah Meeks I just want to ask you because I'm looking at group G here so there's Sweden South Africa who we played recently Italy who we played came up against in the last World Cup and Argentina typical South American style of football for the Argentinians. What are your thoughts on that group? Because I'm, I think that, you know, that's a, that is a tricky group. I think all four teams definitely have their merits. Yeah, definitely. I would say that that's a tricky group. Um, it's always, it's always hard when you, when you get teams that are so passionate, um, just based on their culture, it, it comes, it comes out in their football. And I think that can kind of create an atmosphere that's, um, that that makes things a little bit more in the field and and it is it makes it for exciting football um but i do think that's a tough group um giving the mixture in that group amel i mean uh, we played south africa recently at king's meadow in london you know there wasn't a huge contingency of fans but even all the delegates from the embassy were singing <laughs> for the whole game <laughs> you know the the passion and enthusiasm and and the party atmosphere from them in such small numbers was, was pretty enjoyable, wasn't it? Yeah, they brought the passion, even, um, you know, the playing group, they come with such joy as well. They entered the stadium singing and, and you know, just together. And then they left their change room to come out on the pitch. You know, you always go out on the pitch to take in um, the scenery and <laughs> get a feel for it. But they came out of the change room and out to the pitch singing and dancing again. And um, it's special. And this is what all of Australia is going to get to experience, seeing how each nation approaches a game of football. And everyone's so different and unique. And we're, we're going to be able to um, celebrate the, that cultural diversity at this World Cup. And we do love a party. Let's not forget that. We do love a party. No, um, we do. Meeks, I'll come back to you. Yeah. <laughs> Meeks, how happy are you that we're, we don't have Brazil in our group for once? I feel like it's quite nice <laughs> that we're kind of just, we're, leave us alone for a second. Yeah, it's almost like you had to double check. You're like, are you sure Brazil's not in our group? <laughs> um, but, you know, I guess um, it's almost like, uh they're a little too familiar to us and um it's it's almost like we're missing them now but um no <laughs> you, look i think um the teams that we're up against is, is just just as exciting and we might have a new rival in canada as well so um no i'm looking i'm looking forward to it um and yeah brazil will be there we'll be watching them and, and not playing them in the first in the first group stage this time yeah, it's like Canada or the new Brazil and Sweden. We're like, it's them now. Um, now, just on that, so in Brazil's group, so that's group F, France are there. France, like constant underachievers, underperformers, let's be honest. We always expect so much from them. They've got amazing talent, technical ability, coming up against Jamaica and then Brazil, who are always tricky opponents. What are your thoughts on group F? Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be uh, one that I think we see a lot of different uh, styles of football being played, but 
I think uh, France will be looking at that and thinking it's time that they um, get the business done and topping that group, I'm sure, is going to be um, sort of an expectation that they have of themselves and, and then going into the uh, knockout groups. But it won't be easy because, um, you know, we've faced Jamaica and Brazil recently and, um, you know, world-class players and, um, you know, tough brand of football to come up against as well. Yep, and, uh, you know, it'd be remiss of us not to mention Group E, USA, Netherlands, finalists from the 2019 World Cup, Meeks, I mean, two powerhouses of the game. Although Netherlands recently didn't perform that well in the Euros, got rid of their coach, Mark Parsons, but still huge amounts of talents in that team. What are you expecting from Group E? Yeah, definitely. I think that's a, a, a pretty tough group as well. And, and as you said, Netherlands have had a lot of changes, but um, will you see those changes help them as a team? You don't know. Um, and I have seen teams in the past um, come out with a new coach and, and actually perform really well. Um, you know, they've got something to prove under a new coach and um, to themselves as well and, and also to redeem themselves for, for past performances. So I think they will definitely be a team to watch. Um, and yeah, especially against USA, I think that will be a really good match. And now let's go to Group A. Our co-host New Zealand, Yika Klinkova, who um, coached in the W League with Canberra United. What are your thoughts on Group A? So they've got Norway, they've got the Philippines, Alan Stadjic, former Matildas coach, very well known to most Matildas fans out there and Switzerland. Yeah, it's interesting. I was watching um, the the broadcast and um, you know, a couple of times the footage panned over to Yitka and there was some um, interesting sort of reactions there and I'm not trying to read into it um, too much, but I think, you know, they would be um, backing themselves to give it, give the group a really good shake and finishing in the top two. They've played Philippines recently um and and have that preparation under their belts and um i think new zealanders and australians are a bit like that you know that that mentality that on any day they can beat anyone yeah and we we've seen what are your thoughts meets norway you're playing in the norwegian league or were until you until your injury but again you know they've they've kind of been through this transition phase still got incredible players caroline Graham Hansen, who plays at Barcelona. I mean, they're still a difficult opponent to come up against, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, when I saw Norway being drawn into into Group A, I thought, um, and and in second spot, I think, I thought that's going to be a great opening. Up. I competitively got talent, and it'll really just come to how they're performing on the day. Um, so I think for an opening match. Um, New Zealand on home soil and, and you know, the first game of, of the World Cup, I think they're going to obviously bring the intensity and um, Norway will definitely have, um, I think, the, the calibre to, to play really well and, and perform this World Cup. So that will be a great opening match. Mm. Yeah, OK, well, we'll move on. Look, Tony Gustafsson having technical issues the way of the world these days, isn't it? So he'll probably send a video message on our social channel. So we'll move on. We haven't spoken about Canada. We're quite familiar with Canada now, aren't we, Mel? Another, another <laughs> game against Canada. I played against Canada in the 2007 World Cup in that third game. So it was delayed for 24 hours because there was, what was it, it was like cyclones or something um, down in Shanghai. And it was a stressful game. We drew two all. Um, yeah, a great goal by Cheryl Salisbury there. But they are the gold medalists. We played against them recently, lost against them twice. But what, what, are, what are your thoughts on them, Mel? Is it like, yeah, business as usual, we're familiar with them now? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I don't know if it's business as usual, but I definitely feel um, from, especially from the second game um, and our first half performance and then what we've done following that in the the last two games that we had in the FIFA window, that we we can play well and and mix it with the best and beat the best on the day. And um, we, I don't think we should be afraid of anyone, but we've got to um, keep being um, focused on our strengths and, and our preparation and, and make sure that we're fully prepared for, for them when it comes to play them. Um, I say, bring it on. 
And we've also got a bit of a spy in there. I'm not sure whether too many people have heard. Tom Samani, I believe, is doing some work with the Canadian team. Geez, that man gets around, doesn't he? He's everywhere, <laughs> bouncing around everywhere. New Zealand, Australia, off to Canada again. Um, makes, look, Canada, they're a formidable opponent. They're, they're direct, they're aggressive, and also they've got one of the best goal scorers in the world. No, the highest goal scorer in the world, international goal scorer in Christine Sinclair. We have coming up against them. What are your thoughts against that third match against Canada? Yeah, um, as you just mentioned, they've got quite a rap sheet. Um, but at the same time, I think, you know, in our last two matches, we did we did have really good spells. Um, we performed well um, in patches of the game. So I think we're, we're definitely competitive with Canada and, and really it's going to come down to... Um, you know, who's going to perform for the full 90 minutes um, in the game. And I definitely think that we, we've got it in us and, and we've definitely displayed that um, in the last few games. And, and I don't think it's, um, it's sort of anything um, that we, we should fear, um, but, you know, they probably might feel a little bit of fear too, just knowing that we, we do have the talent, um, we've shown it, and, you know, we're, we're definitely competitive against them. So um, I think there's maybe a little less pressure on us and more on them, um, which we don't mind being the underdogs. <laughs> we do. We love being the underdogs. We really do. Okay, well, look, we're not too far from wrapping it up, so let's move on just quickly. Getting out of the group, Qualifying out of the group in first or second position will mean we'll come up against opponents from Group D, which includes England, um, a playoff winner, Denmark and China Republic. Mel, um, I mean, Serena Wiegmann, we've got to say, what an incredible coach. The work that she's done with the Lionesses, England Lionesses, she won the Euros with Netherlands, she won the Euros with the Lionesses. Um, you know, out of those preference, we played Denmark recently. Who do we want to come up against when we get out of the group? What would the preference be? Well, I think first and foremost, if um, if we're going to venture that far down the track, I think, you know, we win the group, for example, and then um, that would mean that we play the runner-up um, of Group D and you could say that could be China, for example. And if it's not China, um, it's because, say, Denmark's beaten them. So um, either way, um, we had a great... Um, game against China um, in the Olympic qualifiers, one all and, um, you know, Denmark, we, we've played them recently. So I think um, it, focusing on the group stage, uh, so yeah, it's hard thinking that far ahead. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think there's a preference right now. I think um, if I focus on that round of 16, it's either one of those two. And, and I think we'd be um, best prepared and ready to um, perform well and get the result. Uh, come round of 16. Now, Mel, you say you don't want to think that far ahead, but you and I both know the amount of analysis that's going to go into all those yep. teams in that group is going to be expensive, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does, but that's for us to do and it's to, um, you know, help us prepare in terms of the details of the type of opponent we pick for a FIFA window so the players have the best opportunity um, to be exposed to what they're going to face in the group stage. So that's how we look at it and that's where I'll leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Meeks, do you want a quick word on that? Any preferences or just prefer to bat that one off and, and say focus on the group stage? Uh, yeah, I can't say I have any preferences. There's pros and cons to, to every team. Um, I mean, it would be pretty cool to play um, England in the World Cup on home soil, just to beat them on home soil would be awesome. Um, so, and then, yeah, obviously we, we play China more regularly. Um, and then Denmark as well, we've also played recently. So it's it's hard to have a preference. And, and um, yeah, look, it's back on the flight group. With, yeah, on our group. Okay, well, look, I think that's just about all we've got time for. But remember, the Matildas are back on home soil. Saturday, the 12th of November, versus Sweden at Amy Park in Melbourne, followed up by Tuesday, the 15th of November, against Thailand at Central Coast Stadium. Tickets are on sale for the World Cup now. Get them, get in quick. Um, single match tickets, the visa pre-sale is from the 25th to the 31st of October. Then single match tickets, general on sale from the 1st of November. Meek, Smell, it's been a pleasure. Great catching up with you. We've got one in Brisbane, we've got one in Bergen, and I'm in Bedfordshire. 
thanks so much for your time <laughs> and thanks everyone else for watching. Thanks guys. Thanks. The Combank Matildas are coming home this November as we count down to the FIFA Women's World Cup at home. It's there for Kaa! And she's done it! Saturday, 12th of November, Australia take on Sweden at Amy Park, Melbourne. And then Tuesday the 15th, it's Thailand on the Central Coast. The effort going from distance! What a strike! Search Matildas for tickets.